Michael Bidwell's blunder, baby. All day, Locked On Cardinals. You are Locked On Cardinals. Your daily Arizona Cardinals podcast. Part of the Locked On Podcast Network. Your team every day. Welcome in to a Friday live edition of Locked on Cardinals. I'm your host, Alex Clancy. Uh, Thanks for hanging out. Thanks for making Locked on Cardinals your first listen each and every day, free and available on all platforms. What do you think we should talk about today? What do you think? Anything pressing? Anything that is just ravaging national media storylines? Anything? Uh, Yeah, Michael Bidwell's blunder. If you've been under a rock or, you know, focusing on other things besides sports over the last, you know, 24 hours or so, this came out late afternoon, early evening last night, that Michael Bidwell and the Arizona Cardinals removed the independent study clause in Kyler Murray's contract. The same independent study clause that had people up in arms hand palms face to the air. Like what the hell are we doing here? Not a couple days ago. What I'm going to talk about today is Michael Bidwell as an owner in the first segment, what this means for both sides moving forward in the second segment and something that Cliff Kingsbury talked to the media about today, knowing that Rodney Hudson was seriously mulling retirement and what the Cardinals did do slash didn't do with that information to protect the 2022 season and the future from the offensive line position group. I was ready to have a, let's look forward to the future. Let's put everything behind us about Kyler Murray's claws and people thinking that he doesn't work hard and Michael Bidwell is, desperate need seemingly to remind everybody that he's the boss with with the uh with the clause put in there to begin with and you couldn't just have it as a, a handshake deal sitting on a couch like listen k1 we're gonna give you a lot of cheese can you watch some more film for us i don't want to have to put it in the contract i i feel like we have a good enough relationship at this point to where i don't have to put it in the contract can we just can we just high five this can we do a jump high five and just say, you know what? That's good enough for me, Kyler, because you're the future. And four hours of game film on your own maybe doesn't need to be put in the contract. So where we are now, right this second, is it seems like, and yes, for anybody that's watched, for, for people that haven't watched, and this is your first Locked on Cardinals experience, thank you for joining me. I appreciate it. For, for those that have been here since 2017, thank you. I appreciate it. If you've missed up to this point in my journey as the host of this podcast, I'm more on the side of Kyler Murray than Cliff Kingsbury. I just look at a guy that was 43-0 and in high school, won the Heisman, won Rookie of the Year, and then a coach who's never finished a full season with winning games down the stretch when needed. I, I take the winner. I focus on the winner. And what we've seen, contract clause came out. Ian Ravenport, I think, had it first. Kyler Murray's not a good leader. Kyler Murray doesn't work hard. Kyler Murray, Kyler Murray, Kyler Murray. It's all on him. And then yesterday, earlier in the day, he hijacked the press conference, came out and said, listen, if you think that I've gotten to where I am now by not working hard, it's kind of a joke. And I mean, you kind of got to agree. Sure. I mean, people with his talent, people, you know, like him, different versions of him, things like that. They can coast on their talent because they're so supremely more talented than everybody else. You know, and that doesn't mean that they only coast on the talent that they have because they're supremely more talented than everybody else. So he came out with more angst 
and purpose in his press conference yesterday than we've ever seen him. I mean, even when he threw the Hail Mary at the end of the Bills game to win the game, all he did was turn around, look at the Jumbotron, saw it was a catch, and went like this. That's it. Quick hug, game over, go to the locker room. We saw the teeth of Kyler Murray yesterday, and that was great. So, picture comes out. This is the clause. Everybody's going to make fun of Kyler Murray. Kyler Murray comes out, shows his teeth, says, listen, I didn't get here by coasting. And people started to like, if you were on the other aisle, the other side of the aisle where it's, you know, and Kyler's at fault, you kind of started to like moonwalk, like not 100% sprint back to the middle. But you kind of slowly meandered like, okay, maybe this is kind of just a dumb thing to be in a contract. I'm not necessarily sure. I've got my foot still on the side of Kyler Murray doesn't work hard and he's not a good leader, but I'm kind of moving closer towards mm, maybe he's got a point. Maybe he's got a point. So now you're kind of in this purgatory of which side do I agree with? And then Michael Bidwell does what some would think to be the unthinkable. Because nothing shows weakness more than overshowing strength and then rescinding. Nothing shows lack of stability more than an overreach to show who's the boss and then rescinding right when you get a lot of backlash. I wish he would have kept it in there. You'd have more respect for him then. Because, at least you know what? Well, it's a dumb plan, but it's a plan. And he's sticking to the plan. And I'm not doing this to pile on Michael Bidwell. And it's, it, it, it's, it's important that, that you understand that. Because everybody else is doing plenty. I ain't got to do it also. Follow me on Twitter, Clancy's Corner. Follow the podcast at Locked on Easy Carts. Thank you for hanging out. Kyler Murray at fault when the leak happened initially. Not the leak. When the picture happened about the clause, everybody saw it. Kyler Murray, maybe not the antagonist of this ridiculous story after he hijacked the press conference and said his piece. And then the rescinding of the actual clause in the contract. People don't even remember that this was about Kyler Murray to begin with. All they're talking about is the ownership group of the Arizona Cardinals. What does this mean moving forward? I'm going to talk about it next. Locked on Cardinals. BetOnline.net. Fastest, easiest way to check in on all your betting needs. Like if there was a line for Michael Bidwell rescinding this clause, it would have to be 100,000 to 1. But it did. It would have cashed huge if Bet Online had a line for it. They didn't because nobody did because it's made up. Find all your favorite sports and events at the number one online source for odds, lines, and games. Find reviews and news of every league, MLB, NFL, NBA, NHL, combat sports, esports, e- e- golf, everything. Bet Online continues to be the top resource for all your sports wagering information from live in game betting, scores, and podcasts. They got you covered. Go to the website today or use your mobile device to learn more about the action that's happening today. Bet Online where the game starts. Thank you for making Locked on Cardinals your first listen each and every day. I am your host. My name is Alex. I've been doing this podcast since 2017. Every day is better. I worked in radio for 12 years in Phoenix. I decided to take a different job, but maintained my love for radio, talking sports, covering the Cardinals, talking about the Cardinals, giving my opinions about the Cardinals, and I'm happy you're along this journey with me. This journey, this offseason, from a sheer content standpoint, has been Xanadu. It's been heavenly. This isn't directly attacking any person personally. And that needs to be understood. I say this about once every two weeks now. This is the avatar of the Arizona Cardinals owner 
the avatar of the head coach, the av avatar of the quarterback, the entity of those, not the people themselves. And it's important to understand the differentiation between the two. Having said that, what the hell are we doing here? No, uh, having said that, like, what does this mean moving forward? Because I tweeted this out a couple times, you know, this is going to pass. This may be extended an extra week because of the rescinding of, of the actual clause itself. But when preseason kicks off, it's going to be the butt of jokes. Perpetuity is a long time, but it's going to be the butt of jokes for a while. And that's fine. Okay. I'll tell you what, though. What I think will happen moving forward is this is going to light a fire under Kyler Murray like nobody's ever seen. And it's not because he feels disrespected. It's not because the media is making fun of him. So now not only is he short and injury prone and not a good leader, but he doesn't watch enough film. It's not even because of that. Because I don't think that's what the angle was when he said his piece for four minutes. Uh, my buddy Cam Cox over at 12 News had a great, he, he tweeted the, the full video of a Tegna partnership over there. Um, it wasn't like, solidifying his craft or what he's done. I know he listed off what he did, but all he was doing is, in my opinion, was like, listen, man, look at what I've done. How could you call me lazy? That's it. He wasn't like, I'm going to prove everybody wrong and all these things and all these things. It wasn't that. It looked like that, but I don't think it was that because that's not the demeanor of Kyler Murray. Like, he's always been lead by example on the field, talent-wise. And yeah, he's a work in progress. Yes, he's got a long way to go. And yes, I think 2022 is going to be absolutely spectacularly special for Kyler Murray with this as just the bulletin board material to get him over the edge. And at his best, at his best, he is 100% a top 10 quarterback in this league. At his best. And you say, well, sure, any quarterback at his best. Kyler Murray's best is a lot better than other quarterbacks' bests. So what I think will happen in the 2022 season will be Kyler Murray is going to show you a side like we saw from Josh Allen that we haven't seen yet. And Josh Allen and Kyler Murray are interesting cases. I've compared them before. They're obviously not in stature, size, Weight, you know, whatever, not even close. I mean, Josh, Josh Allen's what, 6'5, 240, 250? He's an he's a, he's a redwood tree back there. And he can run and the whole thing. Kyler Murray isn't that. But their plight, their journeys have been kind of similar. Kyler Murray got out of the gate a little bit faster. You saw exciting, oh my God, moments from Kyler Murray year one. You saw it a little bit from Josh Allen. They didn't really know if they could trust him. He didn't even make the all-conference team in the Mountain West Conference the year before he got drafted seventh overall. Like, what they saw was a ball of raw dough. And they didn't know what it would look like when it came out of the oven. After they baked it, after they massaged it, after they coached him. And year one was bad. I mean, he made Eli Manning look, he didn't turn, look, look like he didn't turn the ball over. And then year two was a little bit better. And then year three was Josh Allen. Kyler Murray is about half a year behind that. Their skill sets are not traditional for their sizes. Very different, but that storyline is parallel. And what Kyler Murray can do is mostly what other quarterbacks can't when he's great what he does great when he's doing it great it's incredible to watch now this isn't me just you know gawking over Kyler like he's got things he needs to work on and I'll tell you what I feel like we will have the full realization of Kyler Murray's potential in 2022 the floor will raise the ceiling will shatter and we will see everything that people have been waiting for from Kyler Murray. Sure, ask the question. Ask the question. Why did it take this clause getting shown to everybody for that to happen? That's a fantastic question. 
I think it would have happened anyway this year. But this is just a little extra fuel to the fire. A little extra. Because I'll tell you what, they've got to put up 28 points a game to win double digits this year. I'm sure Steve Kime, he added a couple interior defensive linemen yesterday. I mean, defense is going to be okay. We'll see if Zayvon Collins and Isaiah Simmons can take a step, if Byron Murphy can make that step forward. The Christian Kirk didn't take last year. Their careers have been very similar, obviously playing different sides of the ball, but we've seen flashes from both. We'll see, let's see if Byron Murphy can take that big step. Marco Wilson the same way uh, to complement the stranglehold that Buda Baker and Jalen Thompson have over the top and at the line of scrimmage, depending on the blitz packages Van Joseph puts in. What will this do for 2022? It will unlock Kyler Murray to his fullest potential. And that is a very scary thing for the NFL. Alex Nancy locked on Cardinals. The Cardinals knew that Rodney Hudson was really contemplating retirement and they did jack about it. What does it mean now? And what does it mean moving forward? I'll talk about it gently. I promise. Locked on Cardinals. I'm Alex. I host this podcast. Follow me on Twitter at Clancy's Corner. Follow the podcast at Locked On AZ Cards. Thanks for making Locked On Cardinals your first listen each and every day, free and available on all platforms. So I hesitated on doing an emergency podcast last night. Felt like, you know what? Let's let this simmer for a bit. Because, you know, what is there to say? I had to sit, had a beverage last night. I'm like, the hell am I going to talk about? Like, what are the angles here? Aside from what's right in front of your face. And I, the, the blame spotlight, blame may be the wrong word. The butt of jokes spotlight went from Kyler all the way over to Bidwell. I feel like that's the storyline, you know. And hopefully this will be mums the word moving forward. It's going to be the butt of jokes. It's going to be everywhere. The Cardinals currently are the laughing stock. It's very temporary. But this happens sometimes. And they deserve it. But it's, I mean, it's not going to last. What will last is my questioning of that's too harsh. My, yeah, let's go with questioning of Steve Kime and his roster building. The Cardinals have two players on the offensive side of the ball that are projected starters in 2022. So when I heard, or I saw on Twitter today, that Cliff Kingsbury acknowledged that the Arizona Cardinals knew that Rodney Hudson was contemplating retirement this offseason. It made me think. First of all, first thing it made me think was, ah, had that. Sometimes you got to pat yourself on the back. Who cares? Had that. I did say it as a conditional statement, okay? I said, if the Arizona Cardinals knew that Rodney Hudson was contemplating retirement and they didn't do anything in the draft or in free agency – to bolster 2022's offensive line and the future, Steve Kime may be more delusional than I thought. That was the tweet, pretty much. <sighs> Had it. I think three is enough. Tyler Linderbaum was there at 23 overall. It's not about the Hollywood Brown trade. It's not about that. Because I feel like Hollywood Brown's going to help this roster. I mean, it's obvious. But... There were so many more severe needs ahead of wide receiver. And this one, it's not even like edge rush or corner. It's somebody to protect Kyler Murray. So it is Kyler Murray centric still. And they passed. Second round pick, Trey McBride fell into his lap. Okay. Like still probably a great pick and severe needs. They passed on Drake Jackson who went to San Francisco. Edge rusher out of USC. They passed on their severe needs to draft and trade for players that they already had. Those positions were locked up. They were ready to roll. 
And yeah, with the DeAndre Hopkins suspension, sure, that probably played a little bit part if they knew about that. But let me... If Rodney Hudson retired, what was the backup plan? J.C. Treader? Okay. Does he know the offense? Has he ever played with Kyler Murray? Like, and I, this is a necessary thing to talk about. You never wish this upon anybody. Your team that, that you cover or follow or love, or, or you know, a team that you're rival, that you, that you loathe. What if Rodney Hudson gets hurt? Knock on wood, you never, it's it's part of the sport. You have to talk about it briefly. What do they do? Rely on a sixth round pick to come in and play football? Maybe. But there was no backup plan if Rodney Hudson retired. And maybe, sure, like we don't know all the facts, but all the facts, I mean, we know some of them now. Sure, maybe they had a contingency plan, okay? Why not sign him anyways? Why not sign a guard that can play center? That's not Will Hernandez. Why not? Have some depth. Have some leeway. Have some comfort zone. Give me something. That's what I don't understand. Drop it in the chat. Do you think that I'm overreacting? Do you think I'm overreacting that if they knew that Rodney Hudson was contemplating retirement and they did nothing. Sure, the offense is going to be great, but the offensive line, if Rodney Hudson retired, there would be a gaping hole in the inside of the offensive line. And I don't, I don't understand. Like, make it easy on yourself. Use one of the third-round picks for an offensive lineman. Trade up. Trade a pick. Do something. Why, why, why procrastinate until you put yourself in a situation where you have to invoke time time to pull the rabbit out of a hat? Why wait? That's my question. Why wait? Why not be overprepared? I equated Steve Kime to that student who procrastinates all semester. Doesn't show up to class. Crams for the midterm, crams for the final, gets a C. Because that's what Steve, that's how Steve Kahn runs his organization. He doesn't do things to make his job easier. He always has to pull a rabbit out of a hat and give up the future for now when you just plan now for the future and you don't have to worry about it. That's what that that's what boggles my mind and i i'm sorry like i'm this is not a bash steve kime segment this is a trying to figure out how steve kime thinks segment and i just i don't understand i don't understand now Back, snap back to what's happening right now. Roddy Hudson's back. That's fine. Future, still a little murky. What's it going to be like for the offensive line with Kyler Murray as the quarterback through 2028? But at least for right now, that Band-Aid over the crack of the foundation is in good spot. It's in a good spot. So going into 2022, this is what we know. Even with all of the, the melee surrounding the Arizona Cardinals, all of this. The Cardinals are set. They've got their quarterback. Kyler Murray's fired up. They've got Ronnie Hudson. They've got one of the best offenses on paper in the NFL. And they are primed to show everybody what they've got. And that is something that needs to be remembered. All of this mess with Michael Bidwell and his blunder and, you know, all of, all of this is going to go away. Okay? So hopefully what we're looking at in 2022 is the storylines from local and national media alike are differences worked out, Cardinals win again. Differences worked out, Cardinals win again. Because the spoonful of sugar is winning. 
what helps the medicine go down, what have with all the, the problems that go away, is winning. And it's going to start a week one at home against one of the best quarterbacks this league has ever seen. And then in week two, you're going on the road against one of the best wide receivers and Chandler Jones. And you're coming home to play the 2021 Super Bowl champs. So all is well and good when winning happens. And if the Cardinals can go 2-1 and one in those first three weeks, they will be off to the damn races. And I feel like the jet fuel that is going to be the catalyst for the Cardinals winning in 2022 was this, this last 72 hours. Kyler Murray's never been scrutinized like this in his life. It's going to light a fire under his ass. The Cardinals are going to be in good shape for 2022. Alex Clancy locked on.